Hello YouTube, my name is Parker and welcome back to Near Replicant. In the last episode. Yeah. Oh? Who is it? Who's throwing spears? Help? Yeah! It's my boys! <laughs> so, we got the first ending. We got ending A according to this. Um... So I'm going to be reloading this, and it says we're back at the library. I don't know how we get the other endings. I don't know if it's going to put us back at a place where we can get the other endings, or if we have to start over, or what. I don't know if this is a new game plus. I'm going to go in, and we're going to see. I haven't looked at a guide. I don't know if I'm going to need to look at a guide or not. We'll see here in a second. If we do, then I'll just look one up. So... Without further ado, we're just going to jump right on in and see what happens. Hopefully this time we'll get an ending where Emil doesn't die. That would be much appreciated. And maybe we'll get some more Whenever information. Whenever I interacted with Kaine, oh. I was reminded about something from my past. Maybe Interesting. My mind has been confusing her with my sister this whole time. Anyway. So it takes us back here, specifically. Okay. So we're get so I guess it's specifically after this point that the different endings happen. Oh, wait, Kaine's dreams, discrimination. Oh, wait, no, this is different. Wait a minute, hello. All right, hold on, let me get my reading voice. I was not ready for the amount of reading. The sound of rain filled the village. The steep cliffs that surrounded the area magnified the sound, causing even the slightest drizzle to rattle like a thunderstorm. Thin wisps of smoke streamed from huts as the villagers huddled in their homes and waited out the rain. A single child, however, had braved the downpour and was now wandering slowly toward the wooden, hawk-shaped weather vane at the center of town. The, weather the wanderer reached the vane, which had existed for as long as any could remember, and stared. The child's face was simultaneously delicate and fierce, like a teacup that had survived a shipwreck. Those traits combined with the pale white skin to give the face of an almost sexless quality. If the beak turns east, I go home. If it stays west, then I... The child blinked. The rain slowly dripped down the young one's short hair and began its long descent to the ground. Come on! Come on! The child felt a slight breeze and watched as the veins slowly creaked to life. Spinning this way and that for a moment, it finally settled with the beak pointing firmly toward the east. East? Really? Before the vein could move again, the ja a jagged rock came spinning and tumbling through the air striking home against the child's head. The force of the blow dropped the child to the ground as a hail of stones began to fall all around. Oh no, they found me. Oh, so this is Kaine as a child, and she got... I guess she was got, like, abused and kicked out of the village. A heartbreaking smile crept across the child's face as the stones continu continued their assault. Through the rain, the sound of multiple footsteps grew louder before a voice rang out. Yoo-hoo, Kaine! The voice belonged to Demo, worst of all the bullies in the Eerie. As Kaine struggled to stand, a final stone came skittering through the mud and bounced against her foot. Blood oozed from a cut above her eye and blurred her vision, but she could make out the shapes of Demo and the usual gang of idiots. The boy seemed taken aback for a moment by Kaine's seeming indifference to the blood dripping from her face, but quickly regained his bravado. What's up, freak? You like the rain? You like getting all wet? Or did you finally decide to run away from home? Though she knew it was futile, Kaine turned to leave. Before she could get more than a few steps, the other children scrambled to surround her, cruelty burning in their eyes. Kaine knew those were not the only eyes on her. The tormentor's parents watched from the safety of their homes. She was attuned to this sensation. It was the one she had experienced many times before. While some villagers simply turned a blind eye to the actions of their children, many encouraged it openly. 
In a society ruled by superstition and fear, Kaine was something to be hated, and, if possible, destroyed. I didn't say you could leave, freak. Demo's words chewed at her like a worm through an apple. He can't hurt me, she lied to herself. Be strong, be brave, he can't hurt me, he can't hurt me, he can't hurt. Oh look, the little freak is gonna cry. What's wrong? Are you sad that everyone hates you and wants you dead? Kane prayed for the rain to flood down and carry her away from a world that seemed to have no place for her. But if there were gods, they chose to ignore her. As Demo crept ever closer, the clouds began to thin and the rain slowed. Even the weather hates me. I'm useless, a failure. I wish Demo's rock had already had taken off my head. Kane couldn't meet Demo's leering gaze. She lowered her eyes and stared at the muddy ground below. The bully moved forward until he was inches away. She could smell the scent of old meat on his breath. The boy grabbed Kaine's face with thick fingers and yanked it upward. She tried to turn away, but he forced her gaze back and jammed his thumb against her eyelid to pry it open. Show me. No. Did you just say no? Demo grinned evilly. You don't say no to me. No one says no to me. Not even taking his attention from Kaine, he called to his cohorts. Come on, guys, let's give the freak what she deserves. As soon as Demo finished, kicks and blows began to rain down upon Kaine. Demo paused, still, still grinning, as Kaine curled into a ball and tried to make the pain stop. I don't get you, freak. What you acting like a girl for, huh? Everyone knows what you really are. Kaine ignored the question, choosing instead to stare at the weather vane. It continued to point east, as if supremely confident about the future it had chosen for her. Go home? Yeah, that's a funny joke for someone with dead parents and no home to go to. Freak, chanted the children. Freak. Kaine closed her eyes and listened to the rain, waiting for the pain to start again. As the clutching hands of the village children closed around her, she bent her mind to the sound of the rain, letting it become her world entire. The rain fell. But the pain never came. Only when the laughter of her tormentors turned to the terrified cries did she dare open a single blood-caked eye. Kaine was shocked to see Demo sprawled on the ground, holding his head and screaming in pain. She could see blood swelling from places between his fat, twisted fingers. Oh my god, he's crying! He's actually crying! Deprived of their leader, the other children glanced back and forth between themselves, as if waiting for someone to step forward and take charge. When no savior emerged, they began an uneasy shuffle away from Kaine. But the young girl was the least of their concerns. Instead, their attention was wrapped on the ancient woman standing a few feet away. Is this going to be her grandmother? After struggling for breath for a moment, she finally spoke in a voice thick with rage. Hurts like a bitch, don't it? Now I suggest you scatter before I throw another one. And if any of you little bastards ever touch my Kaine again, I'll do far worse than throw a rock. You can count on it. Oh, I like this old lady already. <laughs> oh my god, this is where Kaine got her mouth, apparently. The old woman crouched down and gently touched the hand Demo was using to cover the wound. Before he could think to protest, she ground her palm into the wound and twisted it back and forth. Oh my god. Ow, he screamed, leaping to his feet. Stop it, what are you doing? Quit whining. Ain't no one ever died from a scratch. You hit me with a rock, you stupid bitch. A big one. That thing could have killed me. The old woman shrugged. <laughs> Death is the best cure for stupid. Nemo's face twisted with rage at her words, locking his eyes on Kaine. He took a step backward and spat on the ground. Get out! Leave this village! No one wants you here, either of you. Seeing the old woman grab another stone, Demo and his companions turned tail and ran. As they fled, the old woman grabbed her side and barked out a single laugh. Ha! Look at the fat boy go! Guess he's healthy enough to run from a fight. The woman's smile faded as she turned her attention to Kaine. Kneeling down, she removed her shawl and placed it on the young girl's shoulders, then produced a cloth from the folds of her dress and began blotting the blood from her forehead. Oh, Kaine, she said. Why didn't you fight back? You're stronger than that lot. The words of her grandmother stung Kaine, and she turned away. Don't be nice to me, she said. I don't deserve it. Nothing, nothing matters here anymore. Her tears, held in check for so long, finally began to fall on the muddy ground below. Everyone hates me. They think I cause bad things to happen. They think I'm a freak. I wish I was dead. As Kaine's tears turned to sobs, she felt her grandmother's hands on her shoulders. 
Despite her advanced age and diminutive size, she was a woman of surprising strength, and Kaine found herself unable to turn away. Don't talk like that, girl. It's a river wide and deep that flows between the realms of this world and the next, and it grants no mercy to any that attempt the crossing. You got a duty to fight until your last breath, understand? The old woman tightened her grip and tried to still the tremor in her voice. You know the pain of losing someone close to you, Kaine. You know because you survived it. As the words hit home, Kaine was struck by the force of her love for the old woman. As a young child, she didn't even know her grandmother, but when her parents died, the woman quickly accepted her as her own. Grandma, as Kaine called her, was a cunning, vulgar, and quick to violence. <laughs> and their first few years together had not been easy. But with each year that passed, Kaine and her grandmother had grown closer. However, it was only now, sitting in the mud with tears and blood caking her face, that Kaine truly understood the depths of her affection. Here was a woman who had seen hard times, who had seen death, who had fought through all of these things and somehow emerged on the other side. If anyone could understand Kaine's pain and loneliness, it was her. Do I make you sick, Grandma? Of course not! Don't be an ass! <laughs> Kaine drew her grandmother's moth-eaten shawl around her body and shuddered. But my body, it's not... normal. If I was normal, then Mom and Dad wouldn't... Hush, whispered Grandma. I'll hear not another word of this nonsense. You're my granddaughter, and I love you. And if folks have a problem with that, they can just go to hell. With that, the old woman reached out and placed a wreath of dried flowers in Kaine's hair. The skill it took to bend the flowers without breaking the stems or losing a single petal was remarkable, and the beauty of it made Kaine want to cry all over again. Oh my gosh, these are Lunar Tears. Grandma, you made this for me? Lunar Tears were legendary flowers. Most people could live their entire lives without ever seeing one, and yet her grandmother had somehow collected a dozen or more. Kaine reached up and touched the wreath as if she couldn't believe this was real. Where did you find these? Just stumbled on them while I was out doing the shopping. The old woman turned away as she spoke, leading Kaine to suspect that the search had been more difficult than she was letting on. The pains she took to construct the ornament, let alone track down all the flowers used in its construction, made Kaine's heart hurt. She reached up and gently adjusted the wreath, admiring the way it felt between her fingers. Didn't quite turn out right, said her grandmother as she squinted at it. These old hands have trouble with delicate work, but it sure looks good on a pretty girl like you. Kane blushed and turned away. You think I'm pretty? Of course you are. What a fool thing to say. Thank you, Grandma. Her mother, grandmother smiled. We're gonna be fine, you and me, she said. Long as we got each other, we'll be fine. Kane took her grandmother's hand in hers, and the two of them struggled to their feet. As they began the long walk home, Kane gripped the hand with all her might, as if trying to stop smoke from drifting away from the wind. The rain had stopped. Kaine stood beneath the weather vane, watching it spin in lazy circles, no longer caring about the direction it faced when it stopped. I don't need to escape, I have a home now. Grandma loves me and that's enough. Even if it's us against the world. Kaine let her gaze drift up past the vane and out into the cloudy sky. The last faint hints of a rainbow were slowly fading. And she turned and headed home, the light scattered into a million particles and vanished, seemingly taken away on the breeze. Kaine's Dreams, Daily Life In the distance, Kaine heard the steady sounds of an axe striking ground, striking wood. The noise was a, had a purposeful quality to it, as if she was hearing a master woodsman go about his work. The firewood being produced, however, was as far from a work of art as could be. Pieces of every shape and size were being flung about a barren yard with wild abandon. Anyone trying to stack such wood would probably die of frustration before the job was through. Stupid piece of shit axe! <laughs> Kaine's grandmother flailed away with the axe, filling the air with both splinters of wood and words that would make the most hardened sailor blush. Grandma called Kaine. That you, Kaine, yelled the old woman, taking her eyes off the wood for a moment. Don't get too close or I might take your goddamn foot off by mistake. <laughs> she brought the axe down on a piece of wood, sending chips flying in every direction. One spun past Kaine close enough for her to hear the whistle, at which point she decided to step back. Once she'd scuttled to a safe distance, she cupped her hands around her mouth and shouted, Grandma, do you need help? 
Can I get you water or lunch or a new axe or something? The axe, poised to strike another wobbly blow, paused in midair. The old woman considered her granddaughter's offer for a moment, then smiled. Tell you what, since I'm doing such a piss poor job of chopping, why don't you come here and take over so I can get the water? Shades have been restless lately, and I don't want you running into one of them bastards. Relinquishing the axe, her grandmother picked up a long pole with wooden buckets on either end. Gathering water was by far the most, the more difficult of the two jobs, but Kaine knew better than to complain. Once Grandma's mind was set, there was no changing it. Kaine did her best to help with chores, but Grandma took every last task that required travel to the village. Though she had lo a long list of plausible excuses, Kaine knew the real one. She didn't want her granddaughter to be taunted or harassed by the villagers. Once Kaine moved in, Grandma decided to take up residence a good distance from the Erie. Out of sight, out of mind seemed to be the best policy when it came to the villagers and her granddaughter, and rare were the days when any but the two of them could be found on the rocky acre of land they called home. Kaine enjoyed the solitude, but harbored a secret resentment for her that her grandmother was forced to spend her golden years in such place. After watching her grandmother leave, Kaine turned her attention to the task at hand. She had never chopped wood before in her life, and soon discovered why the old woman hated the chore. Swing after swing of the axe produced only a tiny crack in the wood, and when she finally managed to connect with a solid strike, the tool embedded itself in the log and refused to budge. Fr frustrated, Kaine swung the axe around her head and threw it, log and all, across the yard. Damn, damn it, uh, crap. She suddenly understood the joy her grandmother felt in a good curse. <laughs> Happier now, she picked up the axe, forced it from the wood, and resumed chopping. She had a natural skill with a blade, but the task was challenging, and blisters soon began to form on her small pink hands. This is tough, and my logs are all weird sizes. Spitting on her palms and ignoring the pain, Kaine redoubled her efforts. Just as she was developing a rhythm, Grandma returned from the village. Setting down her buckets with a small sigh, she took one look at the logs and coughed out a wheezy laugh. Pretty clumsy, girl. You better practice if... if you... Oh, no. Her grandmother suddenly collapsed to her knees, ca causing one of the buckets to wobble precariously. Eyes wide, Kaine dropped the axe and ran to her grandmother's side. Grandma! The old woman shook her head and pointed a trembling finger at the bucket. Get the bucket! Can't let it spill! Kaine steadied the bucket with a foot as she knelt by her grandmother. A small bit of water sloshed over the side and made a new home in the hem of her dress, but Kaine didn't notice. Grandma! Grandma, what's happening? Crazed with panic, she grabbed her grandmother by the shoulders and shook. After a moment, the woman lifted her arms and batted Kaine away. Stop that! Just stop! She cried, breathing heavily. It ain't like I'm dying. Just tired from the trip is all. Kaine desperately wanted to believe her, but one look at the woman's shaking hands and worn face told her more than ever words ever could. Her grandmother had lived a long, hard life, and it seemed the bill was finally coming due. The time when her grandmother watching over Kaine was ending, sooner than either of them had feared. The positions would be, res would be reversed. The next morning, Kaine came to the side of her grandmother's bed and took her wrinkled hand. Grandma, you're sick and you need medicine. I'm going to the village. The old woman shook her head and tried to rise, but Kaine gently pushed her down. It's all right, she said. I'll be fine. Her grandmother fixed her with a gaze that could melt steel. After what seemed an eternity, she finally lowered her eyes and sighed. Well, I don't like it, goddammit. But I guess I should, be, should quit being so stubborn and let you grow up. The old woman watched as Kaine strapped on her boots and made her way down the road to the village. Hours later, as an unseen sun made its way across the dark and rainy sky, she was still watching. Kaine moved at a brisk pace, checking her pockets every few minutes to make sure the money her grandmother gave her was still there. Every noise caused her to spin on her heels, making sure she wasn't being stalked by a shade, or worse, Demo and his gang. But she encountered neither tormentors nor shades, and Kaine finally found herself at the entrance to the village. The few adults she could see glanced sideways at her, then muttered to each other behind raised hands before slinking away into the shadows. Her heart racing, Kaine took a series of rapid, shallow breaths and tried to calm herself. I have to prove myself. I have to help Grandma. I have to be strong. She chanted those words to herself over and over as she slowly made her way. 
Finally, her eyes settled on a rotund older woman who was angrily waving her arms in the air and telling anyone who would listen exactly what she thought of Kaine's presence. Hey, lady, said Kaine with a bravado she did not feel. Where's the apothecary? The woman's flabby cheeks shook in bewildered anger. How dare this, this thing speak to me? They seemed to say, but Kaine saw that her eyes held a different emotion. Fear. Yeah, we're both scared, lady. Trust me on this one. Which way, Kaine repeated. The woman pulled it, pointed to a small building to her right before hitching up her dress and stumbling off in the other direction. Kaine cringed, expecting a stone to come flying from the assembled crowd, but none came. Her mind was filled with a strange sense of pride and as she made her way to the apothecary, but the new emotion had little time to take root, for as soon as she opened the door, she noticed a familiar customer at the counter. It was Demo. He clearly been sent here on some kind of family errand because his gang of followers was nowhere to be found. Oh my god, he sputtered. I mean, uh, what are you doing here, freak? The insult was delivered without force, and Kaine happily ignored it. Stretching on tiptoes to see over the counter, she asked the shopkeeper for the medication. Ha! barked Demo. That old bitch finally keel over? Go to hell, Demo. The boy's eyes grew so wide that he... They seemed ready to fall out of his head, but before he could let fly a comeback or worse, a punch, the apothecary told them to knock it off before he kicked them out of the store. Demo slunk out of the shop, cursing Kaine under his breath. Once he was gone, she allowed herself to breathe once more, taking a brief, brief tour of the shop while the owner prepared her medication. Countless tiny bottles filled the cramped store, each with a label written in some indecipherable language. That is called doctor's notes. <laughs> An ocean of aromas assaulted her nose, creating a scent that was exotic, but not altogether unpleasant. Seeing such a variety of supplies gave Kaine a sense of peace. Surely in a world so vast, there would be a place that she could call home. On the far wall behind the counter rested a portrait of a stunning young girl. The picture had once contained bright, vibrant colors, but time had worked its cruel magic and they were beginning to fade. The beauty of the work, however, remained undiminished. You like that picture? Kaine turned, uh, turned to find the apothecary with a small vial of medicine in his hand. His eyes were gentle but sad, and they seemed to stare through her and, no and into nothing as he spoke. That's my daughter. I sketched it when she was just a little girl. She's been dead for a long time now. Kaine didn't know how to respond. She just stared at the portrait and tried to come up with the right words. Pictures are wonderful things, continued the shopkeeper. They let the ones closest to you live on forever. He shook his head slightly and then looked down at Kaine and smiled, handing her the medicine. He reached into his sizable green apron and produced a handful of old wax crayons. You should have these. There's no one left that I wish to draw. Kaine took an instinctive step back, causing the shopkeeper's face to darken. Yes, I've heard the rumors about you, he said. It's a small village and word travels quickly. Between you and me, I'm not sure which of them to believe, but I also don't think they matter much. I know your grandmother, Kali, and I think that the way she was driven out of town is just is just deplorable. Oh, I know your grandmother, Kali, and I think the way that she was driven out of town is just deplorable. Grandma's name is Kali? thought Kaine suddenly. She was still mulling this new fact over in her mind when and she reached out gently took the crayons from the apothecary's hands. Your grandmother is an old friend of mine, he said as Kaine scooted away yet again, and I owe her much. I wager she would like it if you drew a picture of her. Yes, I think she would like that very much. Kaine murmured a quiet agreement, but inside her heart was bursting. Never before had a villager treated her with some, anything but complete contempt. It was a tiny, almost imperceptible step, but it was a step nonetheless, and with enough tiny steps she might one way discover the rest of the world. When Kaine returned home, she found her grandmother asleep in her bed. Her feet were blackened and raw, even bleeding a bit in places, leading Kaine to think that she had been pacing around the room until exhaustion finally caught up with her. She placed the medicine by her grandmother's pillow and turned to leave, but found the old woman's hand clasped around her arm. Back already, are you? asked her grandmother with a yawn. Come here, let me have a look at you. Grandmother sat up and examined Kaine from head to toe, finally satisfied that nothing terrible had befallen her grandchild. She leaned back and allowed herself to relax. Well, how was it? Those bastards give you any trouble? 
It was kind of fun, said Kane with a small smile. No, seriously, it was. Fun, eh? Asked her grandmother in a voice which implied she believed anything but. Uh-huh. So anytime you need me to run an errand, just let me know. As she spoke, Kane removed the crayons from her pocket. After a brief explanation of their source, she informed her grandmother that she was going to sketch her a portrait. A portrait of me? Ridiculous. No one wants to stare at a wrinkled old crone. But Grandma, it'll make you live forever. Poor shit, said her grandmother, throwing back the sheet from her bed. Living forever would just piss me off. Now put those crayons away and help with dinner. But Kane would not relent, and in the end, Grandma found herself leaning against the wall of their house as if posing for a master artist. Kane took up the crayons, eyed her subject carefully, and set to work. Just as her grandmother was about to nod off, Kane finished the piece. After staring at it for a bit, she released it from her grip and let it slowly drift to the floor. It's terrible. It doesn't look like you at all. I'm sorry, Grandma. I thought these crayons would, you know, make drawing easy or something. The old woman's eyes narrowed at her granddaughter's disappointment. Let me be the judge of that, she said, ignoring the pain in her back and reaching for the paper. The sketch would have been a person's face. It also could have been a boulder, a lump of clay, or an incredibly misshapen loaf of bread, all rendered in a chaotic array of colors. The old woman stared at the picture for a long time, then slowly wheezed out a laugh. Oh, Kaini, she said between laughter, you truly are my blood. You're as clumsy as me and I love it. <laughs> but, hush, I won't hear any more bull about how ugly you think it is. It came from the heart and I'll treasure it always. True to her word, the old woman gave the picture a place of honor above the kitchen table. In the days that follow, Kaine would often catch her staring at the portrait with a strange fi uh, smile on her face, an action she interpreted as a silent, mocking laughter. A week later, Kaine could stand it no more and asked her grandmother to take the artwork down. Posh, said the old woman. I'll take this down when they roll me in my shroud. She pondered this for a bit, then turned to Kaine and dropped to one knee. Listen to me, girl. Seeing this picture makes me happy in a way I've never felt before. And it makes me want to go on, so that someday you can feel the same happiness. It was a moment that burned itself in Kaine's memory. A perfect blend of pride and love and joy that came together to form a lifelong remembrance. She swore to never forget this moment, to never forget the old woman who had made her place in the world possible. Time moves on. People and memories move in and out of life like ghosts passing through a hall. But at this moment will be different, Kaine swore because I will remember it forever. Forever. Oh no, Se oh no, okay. Separation. Kaine listened to the sound of cackling firewood as it st and stared at the black object on her plate. She'd been pushing it around the wooden disc for a good ten minutes, ignoring the bemused stare of her grandmother. Finally, she summoned her courage and gave the object a brief sniff. A sharp, bitter scent flew up her nostrils and made its home there, causing her face to twist with, dis with disgust. Grandma, I can't believe you want me to eat a bug. The old woman threw some more wood under the cooking pot and snorted. It's no bug, you f fool girl. It's a berry. Why the hell would I be feeding you bugs? Yeah, well, it sure looks like a bug, says Kindney. And I think it's burnt or something, because it smells terrible. With that, Kaine held her nose and threw the berry in her mouth, chewing as little as possible. Oh yeah, that's terrible, all right. <laughs> Why, you little brat, laughed the old woman. Look at the sass on you. You've been spending too much time with me, and that's a fact. <laughs> Five years had passed since the moment when Kaine's grandmother saved her from the bullies. As is often the way with two stubborn people, their, rela their relationship had grown in fits and starts, but moved forward all the same. Meals that used to be somber affairs were now filled with laughter and hurled abuse in equal measure. Kaine could not remember a time when she had been happier. As the years went by, Kaine started to shoulder more and more of the daily responsibilities. Her grandmother's legs grew weaker by the day, and she could no longer do many of the chores she used to take for granted. And so this morning found Kaine lacing up her work boots with a breakfast and burned berry rolling through her belly. Where are you going today? asked Grandma suddenly. Kaine looked up, surprised. The old woman barely asked for specifics anymore. Well, I was going to check out the Kelma trees and see if they were ripe. I thought we could make some jam or something. Oh, and I think I'm going to pick up, up some flagstones, so I need to make the, to take the wheelbarrow. Flagstones? What in the hell for? Kaine stared at her grandmother, then held out an arm and swept it around their home. Constructed mostly of, mostly of cloth, rope, and rubble, the old place sagged like a boxer in the final round. 
Grandma, a dying cat could chew through this house. I'm going to build a stone wall so we have some protection. Is the- is the- um, Is there a house that- Like, little place that we saw in the- near that one village? That might be. I'm not sure now. That would explain a lot. The old woman laughed, exposing her toothless grin to the world. Goddamn girl, if a bunch of thieves wanted to ra ransack this old place, let them come. We got nothing worth stealing anyway. I'm not worried about thieves, I'm worried about shades. People saw one west of the village yesterday. The old woman tilted her head and stared at her granddaughter. Well, shoot, I don't know why you have to do it today. We can worry about it some other... Grandma, no. If I don't go to the Kelma trees, we won't eat tonight, you know that. A confused expression passed the old woman's face, and for a moment she was a small child lost at a carnival. Yes, she said after a bit. Yes, of course you're right. I'm sorry, Kaine. It seems lately my mind is... Oh, no. She didn't finish the thought, instead walking over to a nightstand and gently taking the wreath of lunar tears from the drawer. Yeah, it is, because we we saw that wreath. We did. It, it, we saw it on the wall. The flower's petals had aged to a brilliant whiteness, and Kane thought it was more beautiful now than the day she first received it. You're gonna be a true woman soon, Grandma said as she placed the flowers in the girl's hair. So that means less chatter about shades and building defensive walls and more talk about how beautiful you've become. Annoyed, Kaine reached up to remove the garland, but the look on her grandmother's face stopped her hand. You're a beautiful thing, said the old woman, and there ain't another like you in all the world. I'm very proud of you. Okay, Grandma, that's enough goddamn compliments for one day. Such a mouth on you, where did that come from? Gee, I wonder. I'll teach you to sass me, girl, yelled Grandma. Suddenly, she lurched forward and grabbed Kaine by the ears, pulling her around the room with a crazed grin on her face. Grandma yelled Kaine in a quaking voice. Grandma, stop it. What the hell? The old woman stared at her and blinked, then slowly held her wrinkled hands out as if she was... as if it was the first time she had ever seen them. Oh, oh I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry, girl. Sometimes my mind just... Kaine thought the look on her grandmother's face was the most, heart most heartbreaking thing that it she had ever seen. Listen, she said. Maybe I should just stay home after all. No, I won't have have you stay here and keep an eye on an old codger like me. You go get your fruit and your wall and whatnot. I'll be fine. And when you come back, I'll have a nice grasshopper dinner waiting for you. Kaine rolled her eyes and then kissed her grandmother on the forehead and made ready to part, trying desperately to ignore the worry that was gnawing at the walls of her heart. Kaine could feel the old woman's eyes watching her as she moved down the path. Don't turn around. Don't turn around, she told herself, but in the end, the temptation was too great. She spun on her heel for one fi final look and saw a small, bent woman standing in front of a ramshackle hut with a sad expression on her face. God, she looks so old now. It's like the wind could reach down and just carry her away. Kaine worried about her grandmother all day, causing her work to suffer. But little fruit she could collect was tossed carelessly in the wheelbarrow, and she could only found a and she only found a couple of stones before losing interest in the project. Finally, as dusk approached, she decided to call it a day. Cursing herself for the lack of focus, Kaine pushed the nearly empty wheelbarrow back down the path. As she crested the final hill, she suddenly froze in place. The wheelbarrow fell from her fingers and collapsed on its side, sending a few pieces of wrinkled brown fruit rolling down, back down the hill. Her gaze was transfixed by a thick black cloud that hovered just ahead. Tracing its path with a finger, Kaine suddenly felt her stomach knot in on itself. No, oh gods, no! Her grandmother's house was ablaze, the flames licking up as if trying to touch the sky itself. Grandma! Grandma! Kaine ran, fa ran then, faster than she had ever moved in her life. Once she tripped on a stone and went sprawling under the rocky ground, but she leapt to her feet and continued running unmindful of the blood that spilled from her wound hands and wounded hands and knees. As she got closer and closer, Kaine's mind began to race in time with her footfalls. It's too dark. It's too dark, not just fire. Can't be fire. Too much smoke. Gotta save her. Gotta save her. She burst into the front yard and came to a sudden halt. Her worst suspicions confirmed. The smoke from the fire was mingling with the thick, inky blackness of an enormous shade. The massive creature supported itself on three twisted feet, 
and, it, and achieved balance through means of a large armored tail. Scales, horns, and claws sprouted from its body in, ran in a random chaotic pattern, giving it the appearance of a lizard designed by some insane god. Seeing Kaine, it let out a roar and flicked its tail, sending small whirlwinds spinning around the yard. For a moment, the creature retreated into a shimmering, inky, inky blackness, as if her mind was unable to comprehend that such a thing could actually exist. But then the smell hit her, a blend of rotted meat and excrement, and the horror became real once more. The creature bellowed again, and this time Kaine responded with a scream of her own. All right, you bastard, she thought as her scream echoed off the high cliffs around them. It's you or me, let's go. This, the shade eyed Kaine with bemused interest. Then it began looking from her nose and back again, as if urging her to look at the de destruction it had so gleefully wrought. With dread building in her heart, Kaine glanced toward the house. Through the smoke and flames, she spotted a small figure struggling to escape the ruins. Grandma! At the sound of her voice, the old woman began waving frantically. She's alive, thought Kaine, alive! Kaine's legs sprang to life as she raced across the yard toward the flaming wreckage of the house. Before she could advance more than a few steps, the shade opened its mouth and let out a roar powerful enough to uproot trees and send them flying. The blast sent Kaine tumbling through the air before smashing her against the rocky earth. Stars danced in front of her eyes as she tried to remember how her legs worked. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up now! As Kaine struggled to her feet, the shade stomped toward the house and pinned her grandmother to the ground with the tip of, his, of a claw. The old woman struggled to move from the claw, move the claw from her stomach. She might, have, she might well have been pushing a mountain. She coughed briefly, sending a small spray of blood into the air, then collapsed to the ground, ready to spin. Kaine lurched to her feet, only to fall back to the earth with a grasp. Her ankles were on fire. One or both of them was surely broken. Ignoring the pain that screamed through her body, she began dragging herself across the ground, leaving a drunken trail of dust and blood in her wake. Grandma, hold on. Just a little longer. Her grandmother's face was turning blue, her eyes rolling back until only the whites were exposed. Kaine pulled herself across the ground and with maddening slowness. The distance seemed to increase with every second that passed. The shade glanced between the two women and flicked out its tongue, its giant mouth turning up at the corners. Short, panting breaths belched from somewhere deep, in, deep inside its core. Bastard, laughing at us. She had no idea how such a mindless creature could experience emotion. But there could be no doubt that the Shade was taking joy in their suffering. Yeah, I see your point. The Shade moved its claw slightly, allowing Grandma to breathe again. It was clearly keeping her alive only to snuff out her life when Kaine was close enough to touch her. I'm gonna kill this bastard. Summoning all her strength, Kaine rose to her feet. There was a sickening snap from her right ankle as the foot twisted backward. But she forced it from her mind and began to hobble toward the monster. Pulling a small knife from the pouch of her waist, she leapt on the foot and that pinned her grandmother and plunged the weapon down. Give her back, she screamed. Give her back to me. It was like stabbing a rock. After a few swipes, the knife broke at the hilt with a dull snap. The shade panted with laughter again, then raised its tail and sent it rushing through the air toward the young girl that was latched to its foot. Kaine never had a chance. The tail struck her square in the chest and sent her crashing into the burning wreckage of the home. As she lay on the ground with blood pouring from multiple wounds, a small, weak voice spoke up. Kaine? Kaine's vision blurred, but she forced herself to focus on the sound. Finally, her eyes cleared enough for her to make out her grandmother's hands reaching out to her through the smoke. Grandma? Kaine, you gotta run. You can't best this one. Kaine grabbed the hands and held on with all her strength. Grandma, come on, we have to go. The old woman coughed loudly. One of her hands slipped with blood, slipped from Kaine's grasp and stumped and thumped to the ground below. Grandma, no. I said run, goddammit. You have to have to live. You have to get through. The thought would stay forever unfinished. Before she could say another word, the shade's clawed foot descended, smashing through the remains of the roof and down upon the shattered figure of the old woman. Blood oozed from the gaps in the creature's toes as the terrible, putr terrible putrid smell assaulted Kaine's nose once again. She stared at the foot, dumbfounded, convinced that what she was seeing could not possibly be real. 
When the creature finally lifted its appendage, all that remained underneath was a twisted, unrecognizable mass of rubble and red. Her grandmother was gone. Kaine blinked, trying to feel the hands which had been in hers just a moment before. For a fleeting instant, she could remember the warmth of that embrace, the trembling of the fingers, but then the sensation drifted away on the breeze and was gone. Memories flashed through Kaine's mind, one after another, faster and faster until they became a meaningless jangle of noise. Kaine screamed then, a thunderous sound that echoed off the cliffs and seemed to roll away forever. The shade eased forward, black ichor pouring from its mouth and dissolving into smoke on the ground below. The earth shook with every step as it crept toward its prey. Kaine's body slowly rose as if controlled by a mad puppet master. Her arms and legs were bent at impossible angles. Her head lolled dangerously to the side. Yet somehow, she managed to stand. Staring at the shade, her eyes began to glow with a deep red fire. The creature, so confident just moments before, took a slow, hesitant step back, trying to discern if this broken human could possibly pose a threat. Kaine seized the moment. Laughing like a madwoman, she leapt into the air and plunged the shattered hilt of her knife deep into the leg of the shade. The shade shook Kaine off like a fly, sending her crashing to the earth once again. Her chest rose and fell slowly, as if a great weight were resting on it. Moist sounds of pain echoed through her mind. Something warm and thick oozed from her ears. Is that blood? Think it is. Think I'm bleeding to death. No, can't can't die. Grandma told me to live. Deep inside Kaine's mind, something finally broke. The sound, the pain, the smoke and flames, all of it faded away until all that remained was a single incantation repeated over and over again. Kill it! Kill it! Kill it! Kill it now! As the sparks that wa spark that was Kaine slowly began to flicker and die, she felt her desire to kill and her desire to live blend into one. The distance between heartbeats grew longer and longer and longer. Oh? And that was, I guess... She turned into a shade that time. <laughs> the go. beast approaches! Oh, I know. I remember this guy. Oh, I think it kept my weapon too. creature must have. How does it even survive these past five years? I'm not gonna let this happen again. It dies today! I saw it. It's lighter. Stop the blade the, the skill of the user. <laughs> Strike it down. I recall, I don't even know if that killed it, though. We had to, like, turn it to stone or something, right? No, I don't remember. What did we do? Kaine's dreams encounter. Gently, weakly, softly. 
The shade, sure that its tormentor was dead, turned and stomped off toward the horizon, stopping along the way to bellow one final roar. Couldn't kill it. Shamed beyond imagining, Kaine tried to turn her head to the side, but only succeeded in coughing up a huge gout of blood. It was getting difficult to see, and only after a moment of fierce concentration did she realize that her left eye was gone. Laughing to herself, she turned her remaining eye to the ruins of her home and noticed a ragged stump of an of arm resting a few feet away. Yeah, that's mine, she thought with a mad giggle. This is going to make a, make clapping a real bitch. <laughs> ha! Cl cried a sudden voice from the depths of her mind. Finally going to die, are you? Well, you had it coming. Go to hell, Demo, she thought as the unseen assailant. She thought at the unseen assailant. Go to hell before I pluck out your eyes and feed them to a dog. The voice of her childhood terror evaporated into smoke, only to be replaced by another, more re recent voice. Hold still, said the apothecary, materializing from the ruins like a ghost. I want to draw you. That way you can live forever. No, stop. Don't want to live forever. I want to die right here. I see, he said quietly. Well, if that's what you want. The spectral shopkeeper fluttered in and out of existence for a moment, then produced a piece of paper and sketched quickly. After a few seconds, he returned the page to Kaine and smiled. Since you rejected my offer, I decided to draw someone else. It was a picture of her grandmother, real as life. Kaine opened her mouth to thank the man, but stopped as the picture began to blacken in the middle. Before she could say anything, dozens of multi-legged insects began to swarm across the, the image, tearing, it, tearing at it with sharpened pincers. Stop! No! Don't hurt that picture! Kaine reached out with her remaining arm and waved futilely at the air. To her surprise, the insects fell off the picture into the ground below, where they vanished into tiny black tendrils of smoke. Relieved, Kaine turned her good eye back to the picture, only to, for, only to open her mouth in a silent scream. The sketch now showed her grandmother as she truly was, a smashed, unrecognizable lump of nothing. The apothecary smiled, then broke into a jolly dance. See that, he cried as he danced his jig. It's perfect now. She looks just like you. Ha ha ha. I look like that? Oh God. Oh God, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Drowning in despair, Kaine laid her head back in the mud and smoke in the mud and smoke of her ruined house and waited for the end to come. But just before she let everything go, an unfamiliar voice began whispering in her ear. Ain't you got a wish, sunshine? Ah, uh, ain't you got a wish, sunshine? The voice was vulgar and fierce at the same time, as if insanity had somehow found a way to take form. Kaine wanted to scream as the voice crawled under her skin, but her lungs refused to work. You know, a wish, like a prayer or something. Why don't you get on your knees and start praying to heaven? Please, invisible man in the sky, save me, save me. <laughs> Kaine finally resorted to shouting at the voice of her mind. I don't make wishes. They don't come true for me. I'm a curse, a freak. I should be left to die. The other voice boomed in her ears. <laughs> oh God, you are the best. Kaine glanced down and saw a black, shiny substance oozing from her legs. She tried to brush it away, but her remaining arm would no longer respond. The substance slowly crept around her feet and then began moving up toward the rest of her body. Is this death? Is this what it's like? Or is my mind just losing itself? She could feel the slime oozing upward, feel the hot searing pain in it, it left in its wake. And whatever else might be happening, she was still alive and this was real. Come on, said the voice, let it go. Kaine tried to ignore the voice and concentrate on the pain, but the newcomer would have none of it. Don't ignore me, sunshine. You've are, you're ready to give up, ready to die, so why not let me have it? Have what? Your body. Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. I want to stand on the ground. Feel the rain. Taste the wind. The voice paused as if licking its lips. When it resumed, it was filled with a mad, unabated joy. And I want to take your hands and use them to choke the goddamn life out of people. I want to tear out their throats and bathe in the blood, just like before. In response, Kane shifted her head and vomited. The warmth of it crept down her throat and mingled with the pain of the encroaching black ooze. Are you a shade? <laughs> yeah, maybe. What of it? The slime reached her face, crept up past her nose, and slowly oozed into the socket of her missing eye. 
The moment it touched her brain, Kaine was struck by the most powerful sensation she'd ever felt in her life. It was ecstasy. She wanted to scream with delight, but all she could manage was a small, whispered moan. Feels good, don't it? Asked the voice with a chuckle. Yeah, what can I say? I know, <laughs> please, ladies. <laughs> now give me that body. Come on, give me the body and I'll give you more of this feeling. It's a fair trade. A black lung, lump, not lung, began to protrude from Kaine's side. As she watched, it grew longer and thicker, eventually taking the form of her missing arm. I can see better, she thought. My eye must be growing back, too. The slime reached up to envelop the rest of her body, but she managed to brush it, brush it away. Stop, she whispered, marveling at how she had regained her voice. Stop! The black ooze hesitated, as if considering this request, then quickly shimmered down her body before disappearing in a cloud of smoke. Ah, what the hell, sunshine, screamed the voice. We had a deal. I thought you wanted to die. Grandma said, can't die yet. A brief image of her grandmother, bloodied and broken, flashed before her eyes. She saw the shade that had killed her and it heard its mocking laughter, then closed her eyes and forced the image from her mind. Her whole body was quaking with rage. When she opened her eyes again, they turned bright red. That thing took my grandmother. I have to kill it before I die. Kaine glanced down and saw a mysterious pattern. The pattern of the shades burned itself into her left arm. Well, I'll be damned, said the voice cheerfully. Look at that, sunshine. I think you and me are going to be good friends now. This is turning into a Bill Cipher voice. That's what it's going to be now. It's just going to be Bill Cipher. Kaine stared intently at her arm. The more, the more emotional she felt, the more the letters seemed ready to puncture her skin and begin infecting the rest of her body. The arm clearly had a will of its own now. Stop. Gotta stop. Holding her left arm and her right, Kane took a deep breath and tried to calm herself. Come on, don't fight it, pleaded the voice. Hey, it's my favorite dish and I'm hungry. Let it go. Feel the anger. Feel the burn with the fire of revenge. Thirst for blood. Then go out there and shut up and go the hell out, get the hell out of my body. Your body? Oh, that's rich, sunshine. Real rich. Yeah, I think the, the Bill Cipher voice works for the shade. Look, why don't you just up and die so I can have this body all to myself? What do you say? I bet those buddies of yours in the area would love to see you dead. Kane grabbed a nearby shard of glass and tried to saw off the shade infected portion of her side. Before she could, the darkened left arm grabbed her right wrist, crushing it. Kane screamed and dropped the shard as the sound of bone crunching on bone filled the air. <laughs> Stupid idiot girl, you're possessed now, sunshine, and there ain't no going back. The voice laughed again, a loud, long wail that seemed to go on without end. Possessed, whispered Kaine. Yeah, possessed. You and me? We got what you might call a timeshare agreement. Oh my god, it is so Bill Cipher. Oh my god. <laughs> Remember how folks used to think you were a freak? Well, wait till they get a load of you now. Kaine looked up, tears in her eyes. The sky seemed smaller somehow darker. Is this because of that shade? Is this how they see the world? So, uh, listen. I know this whole possession thing seems a bit sudden, but it ain't all bad. There's plenty in it for you, too. I'm a very powerful creature, sunshine, and I know, and now that power belongs to you. You got enemies? People you want to kill? I can make it happen. Just gotta shake my hand. That little fat kid that kept picking on you? That big old shade that squashed your granny? We'll wrap them up in their own assholes. <laughs> no more abuse for you, sunshine. No more pain. Wait, said Kaine. You're a shade. Why would you help me kill another shade? What? You think I'm some kind of racist? Some killing snob? <laughs> I don't give a good goddamn about who you murder, honey pants. I just want to drink from the well. Kaine considered this as she struggled to her feet, the power of the shade coursing through her. The smoke from her house was drifting away with the wind, and she enjoyed the way the cool evening breeze felt on her new left arm. After a long pause, the voice spoke up again. So, uh, how about it? You and me? We could have some good times together. Look, I'll even take care of the bloody part if you don't want... Fuck off, asshole, muttered Kanye. I'll handle the killing. Ha ha ha, screamed the voice. Look at you go. Oh, sunshine, we're gonna have so much fun. So, li so listen... My name's Tyrion, and if you ever need me, I'll just be hanging out on this piece of meat you call a heart. Tyrion? Interesting. Or Tyron. 
Now get to it. The more you kill, the more your heart turns rotten and sour. And I like rotten and sour. He... Tyron is such a Bill Cipher. Kaine found herself nodding at the voice. Yeah, she said. Yeah, I think this can work. I'm gonna find that shade and I'm gonna strangle it with its own guts. And when I'm done, I'm gonna do the same to you, Tyron. Count on it. Ha! Laughed Tyron. I've shit bigger than you. I've shit bigger than you. So good luck with that. Oh, and hey, one more thing. Right now, you and me are sharing this body. But if you ever run out of hate, if you ever, you know, go soft, then I'm gonna take over everything. So keep on killing, sunshine, and watch your back. The voice grew fainter and gradually faded away. Fading to somewhere deep inside Kaine herself. Kaine waited until she was sure the voice was gone, then waved her new left arm around a few times. It feels perfectly normal, she thought, and it feels like... mine. Desperately, she began poking and prodding at the new limb, determined to find something wrong with it. She didn't want it to feel normal. That would mean the creature inside her had already won. I am not a shade, I am Kaine. Repeating this mantra in her mind, she slowly began digging through the rubble of her house, being careful to ignore a certain red stained spot in the corner. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity of heartbreaking work, she found what she was looking for. It was the wreath of lunar tears. Though it had been through hell and back, the garland's petals were as bright as ever. Kainese started to place it in her hair, then slowly lowered the wreath and stared at it. I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm so sorry. But I don't deserve to wear this anymore. I'm possessed, corrupted, a freak. And this time, I don't think there's any going back. Holding the flowers to her heart, Kaine fell to the ground and sobbed. As night gradually lightened to dawn and the people of the Eerie aroused, arose to their daily lives, she remained in that position, as if tears could somehow wash away the horror that now infected her world. Alive! Stay alive! Stay alive! Grandma! Kaine, you gotta live! You gotta Is come back to us! Is that why she left us. at the end, maybe? I thought she left just because she didn't feel, feel like she belonged, but maybe she left because... Tyron is going to take her over. Oh, hey. And that's why she leaves her <sighs> left arm in bandages. Emil, you were the one calling me, weren't you? You still recognize me? Interesting. The scene is a little bit different now, isn't it? Right I mean, it's the, it's the same, but the context is a little Thank bit different. Thank you, Kaine. Welcome back, Kaine. Well, you grew up. So, how long has it been? Five years. With Yona? We are still no closer to finding her. We need a way to locate the Shadow Lord. By the way, this is for you. Is that a lunar tear? It's not as good as your grandmother's, but I tried. No, it's great. Thank you. Interesting. Kaine waking from her long, petrified sleep. Meals unflagging kindness. So, interesting. I wonder Our what we have to do was a now. happy one. And we let it wash over us like rain. That is, until Devila and Popola had to go and ruin it all. Hmm. Yeah, I remember this. So... Are you kidding me? You can't be serious! Please, try to understand. People are tired and scared, and... I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to bear the brunt of that. This is crap, and you know it! It's okay. We can sleep outside. 
No one's sleeping outside. You and Kaine saved this village. And now they want to run you out? People are afraid of us. And really, so as do I long just beat the game again now, us, normally, or I can deal with it. what? Right, Kaine? I'm used to sleeping outside. But we'll see you later. Sorry about this. What is the matter? Kaine always sleeps outside. I never thought about that until just now. It never even occurred to me. Damn it. We should turn in. I didn't get much sleep that night. For the first time in my life, I hated Devola. For the first time in my life, I doubted Popola. Well, now that we know, the now that we know what we know the about end. them, that is interesting. Although I don't know if that was necessarily related. They said and did what they did for the sake of the. That village. actually might have been. I'm not sure. To protect it from the horror of the shades. <laughs> so I guess. Really, how can I blame Devola and Popola? Do I just play the game normally, or is there something else I have to do? In the end, I'm just as bad. Because I never once stopped to think about Kaine and Emil's situation myself. Well, this was another heavy one. I mean... <laughs> That's kind of the norm with this game, isn't it? I should apologize to Kaine and Emil, but what good would that even do? I got a fire going, Kaine. Wait, it's good. <laughs> I'm so happy to get to talk to you again, Kaine. Did we yeah. see this before? I think so. I tried everything I could think of to save you, you know. I polished you with a special cloth. <laughs> I poured warm water over you. I... Actually, I don't know if we did see this. Wait, you poured water on me? <laughs> yeah, but it didn't really do much except make you all shiny. <laughs> hey, Emil. Thanks for saving me. I guess you noticed how I look different now. I'm sorry, Emil. I'm sorry for all of it. Well, I mean, this new form isn't all bad, you know? At least I can look at you when we talk, right? Hey, so why don't you tell me something about yourself? I'm not very interesting. Sorry. Come on. I just want to know you better. Please? Fine. This all happened when I was a kid. Before the whole shade possession thing. My body is... different. And when the villagers found out about it, they started treating me like a freak. Yeah, this is new, I think. But one person, my grandmother, accepted me just as I was. No matter how bad things got, she gave me the strength to keep going. She's really special to you, huh? Yeah. Oh, hey! That gives me an idea. Since we cured your petrification, we should start looking for a way to cure your possession and my body. <laughs> That's basically full metal I know alchemist. We can You're do right. it if we Alphonse, all work together. You're gonna get your bodies back. Heck, it'll probably be super easy. It might take an ending or two. Let I have guess. no idea. More warm water. <laughs> okay, can we just forget I told you about that? <laughs> you gotta make that stuff from Doctor Stone. The I can't remember what it, what, what the acid was. You know what I'm talking about. Feel great today. No cough, no fever. Watch out, world, because Yona's coming out to play. Sleep well? Sure. 
And yet your red eyes tell a different tale. Oh. Don't be so hard on yourself, lad. I need to go see Devola and Popola. Very well. Let me collect these real quick. I think... What might that be? It's Mom's diary. Mom's diary? I have not heard you speak much Excuse about your mother. Excuse me? She got the Black Scrawl and died when I was little. Oh. My apologies for bringing it up. It's alright. I can barely remember her face anymore. This is the only thing I have left of her. Reading it helps remind me of when we were still a family. I see. But the final entries get a little... strange. In what way? Well, here. Take a look. Yeah? Oh, what? System data save, what does that mean? What did I do? Say there. Can you not hear me? Um... Why are you standing about like a slack-jawed ninny? Sorry. Felt like I was... dreaming or something. Oh, sleeping on one's feet is quite the talent indeed. Come now. There's the door. Right. Let's go. What? What's happening? I was about to end the episode. What is going on? Proceed beyond this point and you will be unable to save until the battle is over. Do you want to go through the door? Am I? Wait, is this the guy from Near Gestalt? Wait. Wait a minute, what's going on? Yes, please leave. I don't, I, uh, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what? <laughs> I think that's the guy, because I've seen the, the cover for Near Gestalt. My word. No kidding. Something wrong? I feel as if I've just awoken from a most unpleasant dream. I know what you mean. That happens to me whenever I read it. Okay. Um. I I'm gonna end this episode here. <laughs> this went from kind of emotional to uh, weird. Anyway, um, I hope you liked this video. If you did, you know what to do. Um, we're currently playing through Near Replicant and Neo The World Ends With You. Um, I'm having my mother every now and then come onto the channel and we're playing through Undertale. If you go onto Twitch, I'm on Twitter and every now and then I'll stream. We're currently playing through Metroid Prime and Beautiful Joe. And if any of that interests you, please be sure to check us out, and I hope to see you there sometime. Bye.